And you may be seated. I would ask your kind attention to the word of the Lord as it's found in the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Matthew. We will be reading from chapter 6 beginning at verse 24. Let us together now listen to and for the words of Jesus as he speaks to his community, his disciples, and maybe even to us. As he says there, no one can serve two masters. For a slave will either hate the one and love the other or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. <clears throat> Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life what you will eat or what you will drink or what or about your body what you will wear is life not more than food and the body more than clothing look at the birds of the air they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all of his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? We thank you, O oh God, for this moment, for this time, for this space. And we pray now that your Holy Spirit might just fill this space have its way, that the words of Jesus might find their way into our hearts and into our lives, that we might be touched, taught, and transformed. So speak now, if you would, for your people are listening. Speak now, if you would, because your servant is listening. In the precious and powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray, and the people of God all said, Amen. As you know, we continue today with our sermon series on stewardship. Stewardship, as you remember, as it's biblically given to us, is the care and responsible use of things that don't belong to us, belong to someone else. How many of you know everything we have? belongs to someone else. They are on loan to us from God. And those, as we join the church, as we gather together, as we say and respond, we say that we will serve God with our time, we will serve God with our talents, 
We will serve God with our gifts and serve God with our... I, I just wanted to see if you were still with me. You know, sometimes y'all tune out. And so it is that uh, to this point we talked about time. Time out. Yeah, last week Eduardo did a great job of talking to us about our talents, the gifts God has given this community. Uh, everybody in here is gifted. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm gifted. Look at your other neighbor and say, me too. But what is necessary is for us to identify those gifts, to develop those gifts, and to put those gifts to use in blessing and building the church and healing the world. And you are needed by God, and your gifts are needed. But today, we talk about gifts. Money. Do, 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 do. We're talking about money today. And as I was reflecting on this and thinking how to approach it, I got struck in my reading by the term buried treasure. Buried treasure. And it seemed to me an appropriate analogy, a metaphor, if you would, for where we are today. Buried treasure. It's part of our cultural lives together. It's a touchstone as stories. And so it is. It has come to us through stories from many different writers, perhaps of the most familiar is Stevenson's Treasure Island. And how many of you had to read that in high school? And so it is that you remember that uh, there was this older fella uh, who went and took up residence in the Admiral Benbow Inn. Who knew? And, and, and he drank a lot, a lot, a lot of rum. And he paid the innkeeper's son to keep watch for persons who might come to inquire about him. And so it happened that somebody did come to ask if he were there. Uh, so much so and so insistently so that it fomented within him a stroke. And eventually this character dies. <coughs> and after his decease, the innkeeper's son, some other townsfolk, went into his room, found that he had a chest there, opened up the chest, and there they found some money, not a whole lot, a journal of his life and travels, and a map. And the local doctor, in seeing all of this, surmised that this map must be a road a, a treasure, a, a, a buried treasure, something that is to be sought after. And so it was that the people gathered themselves together and they chartered a boat and all kinds of people gravitated to this quest in search of what? Buried treasure. We're going to be rich. We're going to be rich. And many of those who joined the effort turned out to be malignant of purpose. They were pirates. Arg. Arg. I never could do that part right. Anyway, and on the way to find this treasure, all kinds of mayhem and murder ensue. But push came to shove. Finally, they got to the place they were going. They dug up this thing and opened the chest and found absolutely nothing. I thought that an appropriate metaphor for our time. Because many of us, my friends, are motivated by, almost insanely so, the pursuit of treasure. If I just had one more dollar, some folks say, everything, isn't that right, Violet? Everything would be all right. How many of you know that's a great falsehood? Culturally, we are surrounded in an environment that says money is life's report card. Am I right about it? This is where you say yes. And, 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 and so it is that we almost drive ourselves crazy in pursuit of this. And in our scripture for today, Jesus mentions this thing called treasure. You may recall 
Uh, Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. And what is treasure? Well, this fella, uh, Webster, you may have heard of him. Wrote this book, got a lot of words in it. Says treasure, uh, in the noun sense of the word, are precious things, jewels, metals, that sort of thing. That's treasure. Uh, treasure is also, verb-wise, how we treat something that we value very highly. And so it is that Jesus says to them that you can't serve both wealth and God. Now, I want to be really clear because you need to read your Bible. How many of you read your Bible? This passage comes on the tail end of the sermon on the mount. Oh, good. Thank you. 830 didn't know where it came from. They just... I'm just teasing 8.30. So anyway. And, and so after this, Jesus is facing his disciples. They're gathered around them. And, and he confronts them with this news that you can't serve God and money. Nobody can serve two masters. You're going to either love one, hate the other, despise one. Love the, nobody can serve two. And why does Jesus do this with these wonderful disciples who are gathered around him? Because I think that Jesus knew that wealth competes with God for the affection of your heart. Can I say that again? That wealth competes with God for the affections of your heart. Where your treasure is, there you are. And correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think so. That so much of what we do today is governed by the pursuit of mo. And, and let me say to you, this is usually where I tell you to look to your left and look to your right and say to your neighbor, it's not my fault. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not my fault. Look to your other neighbor, it's not my fault. What do you mean, Clarence? Well, I'm glad you asked me. It is because we have lost the battle with the surrounding culture. We have been infected deeply by the material culture that surrounds us. Madison Avenue knows how to do it to you. And you don't even know that it's being done to you. And it is affirmed by everyone what? Around you. Girl, I saw that dress you had on last week. It was so nice. Well, you know, I went to Nordstrom. Is that the way you say that? Nordstrom. Yeah, are you with me? Let me use it. And either, and my wife went to the kitchen, so I can say this about it. <laughs> my wife comes in the house the other day with a toothbrush. It's wrapped in plastic. It needs a battery. It goes like this and like that. Now help me with this. Hilda, you can help me with this. Don't you re remember we used to brush our teeth with a regular toothbrush and baking powder, sun, whatever that stuff is? You didn't need Act 1, Act 2, Act 3 to rinse your mouth. To, to, uh, is anybody with me here? Now, you, in order to get a toothbrush and the toothbrush, you need, you need to make a down payment and take out a loan. How insane is it that we spend that kind of money on something like brushing your teeth? But Madison Avenue has convinced you, and 98% of the dentists surveyed, convinced you that you had to have this. 
And the, the point is this. Among all these insanely driven, materially oriented things, we now spend up to the limit of what we get. And you heard Jesus say, don't worry about anything. Don't be anxious about anything. Well, honey, when you're living from paycheck to paycheck and you don't know what's going to happen, you can't help but be anxious. And furthermore, there's the devil. Now, I don't know what your concept of the devil is. And maybe a, a, a man who's red uh, and, and got horns and a pitchfork. Anybody with me here? But I have come today to do you the favor of telling you who the devil is. <laughs> you are so cute. <laughs> the devil is rectangular. How many of you know where I'm going before I get here? The devil is plastic. The devil has a series of numbers. The devil has an expiration date. The devil has a security code. The devil has a chip. How do how many of you know that? You, you, uh, who knew you? Instead of swipe, now you stick. Sometimes I want to stick. This is church. I can't tell you everything I want to do. with it. But the devil, and, and, and listen, this applies materially and spiritually. The devil wants to suck you in. Are you with me here? And keep you in. Because the devil finds your weak spot and encourages a behavior which after repetition, so once what were once desires or wants have now by repetition become needs. I got to have that. Can I say this? You ain't got to have nothing. There's nothing that they push on you that you absolutely, positively cannot do without. And so Jesus takes a whole lot of time, but I want to be clear about this too. Jesus is clear that there is nothing wrong with money. But once again... In the Bible, there are over 2,300 references to money and the use of it. You know why? Because Jesus knows who we are. You know, even your scripture for today. Money is not evil. It is the, the love of money. That's why the OJs made so much money. Because they know that for the love of money, it, on top of being a killer jam, it's a good message. So go OJs, 1974, pick it up. It's cool. Anyway, so money is not evil. It is the love of money. Working is not evil. But when we encounter things, because God knows you need stuff. How many of you know God knows you need stuff? Anybody, it, you need food. You need shelter. You need clothing. You know, and there ain't nothing wrong with any of all of that. And so when you encounter money, and all of us will, you can't, you can't get around it. There's two or three ways you can respond. Number one, you can say, oh, turn the other way. How many of you know that ain't going to happen? Secondly, you can take it and you can give it. Thirdly, you use it for the things you need. Not the things you want, but the things you 
need. Because money, my friends, will run you almost out of your mind. Well, this is Stewardship Sunday. I should be talking about giving. Yes! But only after you figure out what the real issue here is. What's the real issue? I'm glad you asked me. The real issue here is the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Can I say that one more time? It is the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Who is the Lord? You see, and that's the problem. If you all can't hop up real quick and say Jesus is, we got a problem. Because the Lordship of Christ is that which is going to govern your thoughts and actions thereafter. Can I get one witness somewhere? And and how many of you know following Jesus is going to put you in a place where you will think and look and act decisive and decisively and decidedly different than you do. Or at least me, if it's not you, it's me. And, you know, all kinds of dumb stuff can happen. Can I tell you what your dumb pastor did? I know y'all want to know how to do tell. You know, I pay my bills online like many of you do. And I try to keep up with that stuff and I'm was paying my mortgage. And um, I remember going back and thinking that I had done it and went back and didn't see it. And so I went and made sure that I had done it. And then yesterday or day before, I went to the stove to use my debit card. How many of you, I like debit cards. That's your money. You're spending your money. You're not charging anything. And the lady said, I'm sorry, sir, but that card has been declined. Do you have another form of payment? And you know, I, shh, do you know who I am? I, <laughs> and so after that, and I had to use the devil card to finish the transaction, which means I have to pay that off immediately. That's another lesson. No, no charge for that one. I had inadvertently paid my mortgage twice. Somebody say, poor pastor. Somebody do something for that boy. Just, just. And, and so now, <laughs> that's right, exactly what I said. Uh, I had to figure out a way to get lunch money from now t- till the 28th. Thank God it's a short month. Hallelujah. But, you know, uh, all I'm saying is, imagine the anxiety that I felt. Now, what if that had been the only place that I had money? Are you with me here? But this is one of the suggestions to, to, to deal with our, that issue. And that's to save. Fortunately, I saved. So I don't have to worry about lunch money. I don't want to take it from my lunch money, but I have, I have lunch money from now to the 28th. You know, $2 a day. Are you with me here? And why are though? Don't you want to take your pastor to lunch? You just... yeah. I took you. I t- are you, are you with me? So, first of all, G, and Jesus says it this way. Seek ye first the kingdom and, and God's righteousness. And, and, and if God gets in here and in here, then you will make the right financial, personal, and other decisions about your life. All right? So once you got that straight, how do I fix the rest of it? Well, I'm glad you asked me. Number one, live within your means. And and, and let me follow that with a quick number two. Create a budget. I do a lot of premarital counseling, 
And one of the things that the folk never come to the table with is a budget. That's what I say. What is wrong with you people? How in the ham sandwich are you going to organize your economic life if you don't know what's coming in and what's going out? Number three. Cut up the credit cards. Cut them up. Pay more than the minimum. If you can. Pay more. Pay them out. Now here's what I found out. This is, and I found this out by accident. Don't close the account. Just cut up the card. Because when you keep the account open, it bounces your credit score up. When you close the account, it shows your credit. I don't know what sense that makes. Anybody with me on that? How, how you should pay something off, close the account, and all of a sudden your credit gets worse? Is it time for a nap? I think it's time for a nap. To say, Pastor, cut this off because it's, it's time for a nap. And, and, and so I'm going to cut this at this one. And that is redefine your needs. Figure out what you really need. But last, there is a treasure that you should seek. And the problem is that treasure has been encrusted, buried deeply underneath the accoutrement of culture. You need to scrape all that stuff away and what you will find is the Spirit of God that's been sitting there waiting because all the stuff that you've been chasing, you will open it up and find it empty. It gives you none of the satisfaction, reward, that you think you're going to get. Find your buried treasure. Amen. As we close today's service, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, hymn number 405. Let's stand together.